meet you. I'm Ariana. Good to meet you, Ariana. I'm Max. So you worked with Seth MacFarlane before with the Orville, American Dad, Cleveland show. How did you become a part of TED? I became a part of TED, you know, good old fashioned way, recorded myself for the audition, sent in a tape, waited a very stressful month and a half or so while it just, you know, kept getting kicked on up the ladder. And then, you know, one night I got the call. Did you've done a lot of drama before, like you were on Parenthood for quite a long time. What interested you in doing comedy? I know that you had your own comedy sketch thing while you were in college. What? Sure. Yeah. Want to do this? Yeah. I mean, I've always loved comedy. Like some of my fondest early memories are like, you know, doing skits for my extended family with all my cousins and stuff like that. Um, I was in a comedy pilot for, I believe, Warner Brothers that never went anywhere when I was really little called Commando Nanny, about a nanny who was a commando in the British military. So yeah, never really went anywhere. This was really my first opportunity to do any sort of professional comedy. And it was really, it's a, it's just a blast. I mean, I love making people laugh. How would you say approaching comedy is different than approaching drama, especially this type of comedy? Because it's definitely different. There's longer bits of banter that you have to very much stay in character for. Yeah. Um, I would say there's actually not a whole lot of difference in how you approach it. Like you said, there's a lot of banter. So the rhythm is very important. And having that like connection with your scene partner in terms of both of you know where the comedy is living in the scene is super important. But it's not that different in terms of when you're doing comedy, the most important thing is that your character doesn't find what's happening funny. <laughs> like the more serious you are and the more dire and high stakes the moment is, and it's just so not funny to you, the funnier it ends up being. Yes, yes. And what was it like to be the lead? Because Parenthood was very much an ensemble show, but a lot of times it's just you and the stuff there. Yeah, a lot of a lot of my scenes are with just the bear, which, you know, it, it, that's its own challenge. There's nothing there when you're doing anything with the bear. It's just empty space. Uh, but it was a real fun time. I would say, you know, second lead to the bear, first human lead, something like that. Um, but it was a blast. It was definitely nerve wracking coming in. This is sort of like the biggest part I've had in something so far at the forefront. Um, and so there were definitely nerves coming into it, but those melted away pretty much instantly when I got on set. It's just like such a great, kind, supporting group of people. Yeah. And you were saying that there's no bear there. Is there someone at least reading Ted's line so that you yeah. know how to go so back Seth, and forth? Seth directed every episode. He was there on set every day. He was sometimes in another room, but usually just off camera looking at the monitors with his, you know, little script posted up so he didn't have to be off book for the tremendous amount of Ted lines while also at the same time making sure all the shots were lining up. So the fact that he was there uh, is really kind of what made the whole thing possible. There couldn't have been any improv. The timing would have been off. I'm sure it would have been a way bigger challenge for the animators, uh, you know, trying to match the timing of everything. Uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely, it, I don't think it could have been done. Uh, had Seth not been there. Yes. And you're playing young John, who yeah. in itself is an iconic character, but then played by an uh, iconic actor. When you were sure. creating young John, did you take some inspiration from the movies? Did you take some inspiration from Mark Wahlberg? Or was it like a completely different time period for you? Um, I took it more to be a completely different time period. You know, I just, I really tried to go with what was in the script, with what was given and, you know, whatever liberties that I could take from there for sure. Uh, but I'd have been kind of foolish not to at least use the movies and Mark Wahlberg and those as data of like, okay, this is where this guy ends up. So like, where, whereabouts might he have been at this period of time? Uh, but I wanted to be really careful not to do a Mark Wahlberg impression if that makes sense. I didn't want to just do sort of a one-to-one -one recreation. I really wanted it to be like, okay, there's this 16 year old guy who wished his best friend alive 11 years ago, and then just take that and run with it. Yes. Speaking of 
just his best friend. I was kind of surprised about John's backstory is because he literally only has Ted. He doesn't have any friends. He doesn't really have any desire to have any friends. And he's actually really. more innocent in the beginning and even throughout the first season than you would kind of expect when you see him as an adult. Were you surprised about the backstory? Um, I wouldn't say I was necessarily super surprised by the backstory. I feel like when we see them at the beginning of the first Ted movie, they're in pretty much the same position where they're each other's only friends and barely have connections otherwise, you know, to the outside world. Um, yeah, in terms of like how innocent they are, or John is, Ted is certainly not innocent in the uh, in the series. Uh, I like to think of it that uh, Ted's corruption of John hasn't completely taken hold yet. He's got enough other influences in his life at that point that he's still like got a chance. He's got a shot. And then by the time the first movie rolls around, there's there's no shot. Yes. Speaking of the time period, so they're in Boston. I know that you went to Harvard, but how did you create that Boston accent? Because honestly, when I started watching the first episode, I was very surprised by it. Yeah, that Boston accent, you know, I actually had to learn a Boston accent for an audition for something years ago that I did not get. Um, and then I really put my nose to the grindstone and worked hard on it. The studio set me up with a dialect coach, uh, like months out from when we started shooting, you know, a couple months before even the first table read. I really wanted to make sure uh, that I got it down into my bones before we started shooting because I didn't want any Bostonians to show up and kick my ass because they are very particular and very precious about their accent as well they should be. If, if someone's doing it wrong, they should catch flack for it. So I'm just like fingers crossed every day until the show comes out that Boston at large approves. What's the hardest part about a Boston accent? I think the hardest part about the Boston accent is similarly hard to like the rest of sort of the the northeast city accents where if you aren't careful and you aren't very particular about like your vowel placement your rebracketing stuff like that uh then you can slip into any of the others so like if you do boston wrong and you start to hit those vowels a little longer and a little rounder you'll get into brooklyn or you'll get into jersey like they're they're all they're all close together um and i think that's the tough part yeah speaking of so you had to keep up with the boston accent you had to keep yeah. up with an invis invisible teddy bear and you had to keep up with scotty alana and georgia how did you yeah. were, did you ever break character when you were filming these scenes because it is pretty ridiculous constantly in the best possible. constantly yeah absolutely um it's it's lucky with my scenes with Georgia, a lot of them are a little more uh, grounded, if that makes sense. But all of my scenes with Scott and Alana are just like somebody's fever dream. It's absolutely insane. The two of them, and I think everybody on set will agree, are the hardest people not to laugh at when they're doing their thing. They can just take it to this level that nobody else can. And even if they're not doing anything, just existing in space, just their faces are just designed to make you laugh. Yes. What would you say about Blair and John's bond? Because Blair to me is very essential to the show because if her voice of yeah. reason wasn't there, it would just be in a very inappropriate show. Like we need that checks and balance of, oh, this is ridiculous. Why do you think they have such this bond? And what was that bond? What was it like to build that bond with Georgia? Yeah, I feel like, you know, sort of the reasoning behind their bond comes out in, in the in the pilot and, you know, like the first hour long thing, you know, they both don't have and really want a presence like each other in their lives. Blair really wants someone who is part of her family, who she feels like isn't a complete screw up that she can show how to be the right way out in the world. And John wants, honestly, John wants someone other than Ted close with him in his life. That's that's like a big thing. And in terms of building that bond with Georgia, you know, it was pretty easy. We're the same age. We're both relatively chill, cool people. 
her a little more so. Um, and, you know, we, we all as sort of a cast spent a lot of time both before shooting and during shooting uh, sort of outside of the set, all making sure that we were together and we were hanging out and we were making sure to have, you know, experience outside of just shooting. Yes. The show was set in the 90s and you were born in the 90s, but not like the most active participant during that decade because you were a toddler. Um, yep. What would you say while doing the show is like your favorite part of the 90s or something you discovered that you really enjoyed? Something I discovered that I really enjoyed. Uh, I did watch Flash Gordon in the lead up to shooting the show. That was pretty stupid and really fun. Um, uh, all the props were real. Uh, so if there's ever a scene of me like laying back in bed and like playing a Game Boy, I'm just playing Tetris. So that was pretty cool. Uh, I will say on on the other side of the spectrum, you know, I'm sure that I had used one at some point when I was little, uh, but at a certain point I have to put a porn video into the VCR and the first take, I put it in upside down uh, and backwards. So I got it like double wrong and, you know, it wouldn't go in and I'm like trying to like shove it in. I'm like, I don't remember this being this hard. Um, and then they cut camera and everybody started just laughing at me, just pointing fingers. just like, ha ha, ha ha, this kid doesn't know. I will say, I will give you the benefit of the doubt that it is like very sketchy to put a VCR in because like it has to take, but it, you don't want to push it too far. It's yeah, you don't want to push. I liken it to like, if you're plugging in like a USB thing mm -hmm. nowadays and you get it wrong the first three times and then somehow it's the original time. It's sort of, that if I were trying to give myself a break, that's what I would compare it to. Yeah. What would you say was your favorite scene or your favorite episode? Favorite episode, maybe the Halloween episode where I got to do all of that insane stuff with Danny Jollis who played Will. Uh, he's just lovely guy, played an absolute insane person. Uh, and also I got to uh, huck eggs at people from a roof, which I've never gotten to do before. And uh, I'm really proud of a couple of the shots that I took. I really, I really just like domed a couple people. That was great. Yeah, I feel like my favorite was probably the O.J. Simpson reference, but just because- <laughs> it, Right at the end there, yeah. yeah. It was interesting. Like I was alive, <laughs> but not like aware of what was going on to see like, this is what's kind of screwing up his life. I thought that was very funny. Yeah. Oh, that when I read that for the first time, I was like, this is, <laughs> this is right. This makes sense. Yeah. This is what happened. So did you have a quote unquote regular high school experience or were you homeschooled? A uh, quote unquote regular high school experience. Okay. Sounds like a, a fair way to put it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was, I was working on set a lot, but on the days when I wasn't, I was just going into, going into high school. Yeah. How would you say your teenage version of yourself relates to teenage John? Um, I don't think teenage me would like teenage John at all. He'd be like, who is this idiot? What is he doing? Like, how is he constantly getting in all this trouble? I mean, yeah, I smoke weed too, but like, you don't have to be an idiot while doing it. Um, yeah, I, I don't think he'd like him at all. The adult 26 year old me is like, ah, this guy, I, lo I love this kind of guy. Uh, but no, our, our teenage selves would not relate. Yes. I also love about the show and you can even t um, tell me how it was to act in this, that everyone just accept that Ted is a bear. There is no, Oh, why is this yeah. bear here? Like, what was it like to do that type of comedy where the weirdness is just accepted? Even when we meet Dennis, the dump truck. Oh man, you've seen it all. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that's sort of like the appeal of it, right? Is that everybody was baffled. Everybody in the globe was baffled when a teddy bear came to life. And now it's just like, oh yeah, he's a guy, I guess. Just, hey, what's up, dude? Um, I think that's that's the charm of the whole thing is that, excuse me, uh, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares. Yes. So we end season one with it's the end of junior year. What would you love to see in season two and future seasons? Should we get the chance to do a season two? 
would love to see John get laid. I mean, that that boy had it just just ripped from his grasp by O.J. Simpson in a in a Ford Bronco. Um, but uh, other than that, I'd like to see him make maybe a friend. I feel like that could be cool if he had like one other friend or maybe found a hobby or an interest and then, you know, loses interest in it by the end of the episode. Just something. Just something to hang his hat on. But yeah, maybe he shouldn't meet women thing. without the TV on because as we know, a lot more happens in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh my God. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to me. This was great. I've been a fan for basically like a decade. Pyrrhica was on for a while and then the purge, you opening the door. I'm okay with it, but I know that some okay, people Okay, thank are. you. Good enough. <laughs> but yes, I can't wait to talk to you about this and future projects again. All right. Awesome. Thank you, you so much. One. No problem. Great to talk to you. Bye. Bye.